The purpose of this video is to explain the standard setup, operation, and post-operative maintenance of the CUSA NXT ultrasonic tissue ablation system. This video does not address every possible situation involving the use of this system and appropriate accessories. If you have questions about anything contained in this video, the operator's manual on which this video is based, or anything not addressed in this video, please consult the CUSA NXT operator's manual or call your Integra representative. The CUSA NXT system is comprised of the console, foot switch, hand pieces, and optional service module. Each procedure requires the use of a disposable tip, flue, tubing set, and waste collection canister. A container of sterile intravenous fluid, such as isotonic saline or a lactated ringer's solution, is also required. The CUSA NXT console sits on top of the service module. If the service module is not used, it should be placed on a wheeled cart. Place the system in a convenient location outside of the sterile field. If the system will be used with wall suction, plug one end of the detachable power cord into the AC power inlet on the rear of the console. Plug the other end of the cord into the wall receptacle. If the service module will be used, plug the short power lead located in the service module's top rear compartment into the AC power inlet on the rear of the console. Plug one end of the detachable power cord into the service module's AC power inlet on the rear of the service module. Plug the other end of the cord into the wall receptacle. It is suggested that a hard-sided waste collection canister be used when operating the CUSA NXT system. To set up the waste collection system, first place the canister into the base of the service module. Ensure that the contamination guard is installed to protect the vacuum pump in the service module. Connect the tubing from the contamination guard to the vacuum port on the canister. Note that the top of the canister has a patient port open. This is where the tubing from the handpiece will be connected. On the console, lift the irrigation pole and pull to desired height and secure by turning the knurled locking ring clockwise. Hang an IV bag of normal saline or a lactated ringer solution onto the hook. Selector handpieces are steam sterilized in the selector sterilization tray. Remove the sterile handpiece components from the tray on the sterile field and assemble the handpiece using the selector wrench set. Caution! Failure to use the selector wrench set during the assembly and disassembly may cause damage to the handpiece. If the pieces are not tightened properly, the handpiece could overheat and not function properly. Correct tightening of the joints can be assured only by use of the wrench set. The handpiece tip assembly is composed of the handpiece, angled extension, tip, flue, and shroud. The handpiece is assembled using a sterilizable wrench set comprised of a holder and a wrench. The disposable tip and flue are packaged with a stylet that should be retained in case it becomes necessary to clear the tip during the procedure. Using the appropriate wrench set, place flat two of the handpiece on the holder and secure in the appropriate sized slot. Screw the angled extension into the handle by hand and then tighten in a clockwise direction with the wrench. Reposition the handle of the handpiece, securing flat one into the appropriate sized slot of the holder. Screw the tip into the angled extension by hand and then, using the wrench, tighten the tip by turning the wrench clockwise. Remove the handpiece from the holder and attach the black shroud onto the handpiece, ensuring that the shroud is centered and aligned with the angled extension. Warning! Failure to center the shroud may lead to overheating of the handpiece due to improper alignment. Attach the clear flue by firmly pushing into the shroud until completely placed in position. The tubing kit contains a sterile tubing kit, hose clips, and stylet. Open the kit, remove the tubing kit from the wrapper, and turn the tubing kit over onto the sterile field. Locate the double lumen tubing from the center of the sterile tubing kit and connect it to the irrigation and aspiration ports on the back of the handpiece. If using the 24 kHz microsurgical handpiece, you will need the mini tubing kit. 
Attach the white connectors on the mini tubing kit to the open end of the tubing kit. Connect the other end of the mini tubing set to the irrigation and aspiration ports on the back of the microsurgical handpiece. Using the sterile white hose clips on the tubing set, attach the handpiece cable to the tubing set. Tubing clips are spaced at convenient intervals and can be adjusted as desired. Pass the remaining tubing and the handpiece plug off to the circulating nurse. Complete the system setup by routing the tubing through the filter connection port, peristaltic pump, and pinch valve on the side panel of the console. First, push the filter on the tubing kit into the aspiration filter connection port on the left side panel of the console. Next, following the diagram on the left side of the console, route the large bore aspiration tubing through the pinch valve and connect the end of the tubing to the patient port of the suction canister. To route the smaller irrigation tubing, first unclip the latch of the peristaltic irrigation pump. Place the IV tubing over the roller of the pump. The spiked and capped distal end will exit the top of the pump next to the irrigation pole. Ensure that the tubing is aligned with the V-shaped notches of the upper part of the pump head and close the latch. Remove the cap from the spike on the irrigation tubing and spike the IV bag. Connect the handpiece plug to the color-coded port on the front or side of the console. Plug the foot switch into the foot switch socket located on the rear panel of the console. Place the foot switch in a convenient position for the surgeon. If using the service module, push the power switch on the rear of the service module. On the rear of the console, push the power button located in a recessed compartment above the power cord. After the system computer has successfully booted up, you will see the Prime screen. Press the Start button to automatically prime the handpiece with the irrigation fluid. The prime cycle will take approximately 60 seconds. Confirm the fluid has filled the flu around the tip. You may press Prime again if fluid has not yet reached the tip, and you may press Stop at any time to turn off the priming pump. Once priming is complete, you will see the main system screen. It will display the default settings of 10% power, 3 milliliters per minute of irrigation, and 100% aspiration, unless different preset values were previously saved. The CUSA NXT is now ready for use by the surgeon. You may use the touchscreen monitor to adjust the power, irrigation, and aspiration levels. Touch of the orange up or down arrows will increase or decrease the power setting by 5%. Touching the power level scale will increase or decrease the setting by 10%, with each touch above or below the current level. Typical power settings are between 70% and 100%. When adjusting the irrigation level, each touch of the blue arrows will increase or decrease irrigation by one milliliter per minute. Touching the irrigation level scale will increase or decrease the setting by two milliliters per minute. Typical irrigation settings are between two milliliters per minute and eight milliliters per minute. To adjust the aspiration level, press the appropriate green arrows or indicator bar. Each touch of an arrow will increase or decrease suction power 5%. Touching the aspiration scale will increase or decrease the setting by 10%. Typical aspiration settings are between 70% and 100%. During system operation, the information panel will display the cumulative handpiece activation time and the actual suction power, measured in millimeters of mercury. Should the surgeon wish to change system settings, power, irrigation, and aspiration levels may be readjusted at any time during the operation by touching the appropriate scale or arrow. The activation timer and system settings will be reset when power is turned off for more than 30 minutes. System settings are retained, however, when the system is powered down for less than 30 minutes, such as during intraoperative MRI imaging. To operate the ultrasonic aspirator, the surgeon depresses the orange power pedal on the left side of the foot switch. The foot switch delivers power proportionally to the distance the foot pedal is depressed. 
For example, pushing the foot pedal halfway down delivers 50% of the maximum power level that is set on the console. To deliver a bolus of fluid, the surgeon depresses the blue irrigation pedal on the right side of the foot switch. Like the power pedal, the rate of irrigation delivery is proportional to the distance the irrigation pedal is depressed, up to a maximum rate of 50 milliliters per minute. Should a system error occur, the appropriate green indicator will turn to yellow and an alarm will sound. To find a resolution to the alarm, press the flashing yellow indicator. Help information will appear on the screen with suggestions for resolving the alarm. It is advisable to occasionally immerse the tip in sterile saline during operative use. This flushes the handpiece, prevents debris from drying on the inner surfaces, and helps minimize the risk of blockage. Should a blockage occur in the handpiece, the stylet should be passed through the tip and up the central aspiration channel until the blockage is cleared. Then flush the tip in sterile saline as before. Never pass the stylet down the rear aspiration port. This may damage the handpiece. Should you wish to retain system settings for use during subsequent procedures, press the Settings button. Then the Presets button. Then press the Save Current Set Points button. The next time the system is turned on, the saved settings will be loaded. After the procedure, Flush the handpiece by aspirating at least 100 milliliters of saline. Then remove the hose clips from the handpiece cable. Turn off the power switch on the rear of the console. Remove the power cord by pulling on the metal housing. Wipe it clean and store it in the rear of the service module. To disconnect the foot switch cord, pull the metal housing of the connector. Wipe the foot switch clean. If necessary, it can be immersed in a solution of warm water and detergent and rinsed, but the connector should be kept dry. Allow the foot switch to dry before storing it in the service module. Disconnect the handpiece from the console. Remove the IV bag and twist the knurled ring to store the irrigation pole. Open the peristaltic pump latch, remove the irrigation tubing, retaining the IV bag in one hand, and close the peristaltic pump latch. Pull the aspiration filter out of the connection port and remove the aspiration tubing from the pinch valve on the side of the console. Disconnect the tubing set from the handpiece. Disconnect the contamination guard tubing from the vacuum port on the waste collection canister, then discard the canister IV bag and the tubing set together. Do not remove the contamination guard on the front of the service module. To clean the handpiece, prepare a cleaning solution of warm water containing detergent in a sink or bowl. Remove and discard the clear flue. Remove the black shroud and place it in the cleaning solution. Caution! Failure to use the appropriate selector wrench set during disassembly and assembly may cause damage to the selector handpiece. Using the appropriate wrench set, place flat one of the handpiece in the appropriate sized slot of the holder. Using the appropriate sized end of the wrench, loosen the tip by turning it counterclockwise. Unscrew the tip by hand and discard it if applicable. Reposition the handle of the handpiece and secure flat two in the appropriate sized slot of the holder. Using the wrench, loosen the angled extension by turning it counterclockwise. Detach the angled extension and place it in the cleaning solution. Keeping the handpiece plug dry, place the handpiece handle and cord into the cleaning solution. Warning! Plugging a wet handpiece plug into the console can cause severe damage to the console and the handpiece. Thoroughly clean the lumens of the disassembled handpiece and parts by inserting the aspiration port brush in the direction of aspiration. Always push the port brush through from the tip end of the handle. Never enter via the rear of the handpiece, as this could result in internal damage. Keeping the handpiece plug dry, rinse all parts in clean water and dry with a clean soft cloth. 
Clean the wrench set in the cleaning solution and then rinse it with clean water. Place the wrench set in the sterilization tray. Place the disassembled handpiece, angled extension, shroud, and wrench set in the sterilization tray. If using reusable tips, add a tip and flue to the tray. To sterilize the handpiece, follow the handpiece sterilization parameters as indicated in the CUSA NXT Operator's Manual. The CUSA NXT system incorporates an online help system. This online help provides information on handpiece setup, system setup, and troubleshooting. To access the help system, press the Help button from the main system screen. Access a specific help topic by touching a main topic, then the appropriate subtopic. Progress through multiple screens of a help topic by touching the Next and Previous buttons. If you have questions that are not answered by the online help system, review the CUSA NXT Operator's Manual, contact your Integra representative, or contact Integra Technical Support. <laughs>